Hello students, today our topic is societal impact and in this lecture we are going to discuss a very important topic related to societal impact that is unit number 4 of the syllabus. As you know that uh, this is a part of your term 1 examination and in term 1 examination societal impact and Python will be asked. So in this lecture our main focus is discuss about the different types of software license and we will discuss this topic uh, in detail as well as we will discuss a deleted portion of the societal impact that is intellectual property right in this syllabus also in this video also. So let's start. So let us take M one by one. First of all, BST license is clean known as Berkeley Software Distribution BST license. So what is BST license and for what purpose it is used for? The BST represent basically a family of permissive free software license that have few restrictions on distributions compared to the other free software license such as GNU general public license. So is important point here it is a family of permissive free software license and second thing is few restrictions here in comparison to general public license now there are two important persons of BSD license uh, first one is the new BSD license it is also called as three clause license and it allows unlimited redistribution for any purpose as long as its copyright notices and license and disclaimers of warranty are maintained and second point regarding to this is the license also contained clause restricting use of the names of the contributors for endorsement of a dried work without a specific permission and uh, the simplified uh, second one is the simplified BSD license we BSD license also called as free BSD license basically it omits the non endorsement clauses so the basic difference between the new BSD license or the modified BSD license and the and between uh, free BSD license is that um, non endorsement clauses um, basically free BSD license omits the non endorsement clauses and um, the new BSD license or modified BSD license contain endorsement clauses so this is the, all about BSD license so few things are very important first of all BSD license basically represent a family of permissive uh, free software license second thing is that in comparison to general public license um, it provide few restrictions and uh, it uh, basically can be BSD can be categorized into two basic categories modified and free BSD license uh, modified also called as three clause license um, first uh, one is that it allows unlimited distribution for any purpose as long as this copyright notices and warranty are maintained and second important thing is that the license also contain a clause of restricting use of names of the contributors contributors for endorsement of a drive work so and the second is uh, the simplified BSD license also called as free BSD license which omits the non endorsement clauses so the difference between endorsement clause um, next uh, is MIT license MIT license basically the shortest and the probably broad uh, broadest of all of the popular open source license and it is the least restrictive open source license and the basic provisions of this license um, basically there, there are three basic provisions first one is you can use copy and modify the software however you want second thing you can give the software for uh, free or sell it you have no restrictions on how to distribute it and second thing the only restriction is that it be accompanied by the license agreement so these are the three important points regarding to MIT license first one is you can use copy and modify the software however you want second is you can give the software away for free or sell it um, there is a little bit spelling mistake in second point second point is you can give the software away for free or sell it and uh, you have no restriction on how to distribute it and third point is the only uh, restriction is that it be accompanied by the license agreement and uh, third license is Apache license 
so the apache slice is basically a grants a number of rights to users these rights can be applied to both copyright and patent and the basically the basic features of apache license are first one is right um, rights are perpetual that means once granted you can uh, you can continue to use them forever it means for lifetime second thing is rights are worldwide so rights are worldwide it means if the rights are granted in one country then they are be granted in all other countries next point is rights are granted for no fee or royalty so there there, uh, there is a front uses free no uh, per uses fee or any other basic rather either and the third is rights are non-exclusive it means uh, you cannot the sole license and other can also use the license work and last point uh, regarding to apache license are rights are irrevocable it means uh, no one can take these rights away once they are granted so these are the some important points regarding to the apache license so these are the three different types of license and in our previous lecture we discussed about gnu and uh, gn uh, also pronounced as glu so no general public license gpl and lgpl so let us take a quick revision of gpl and lgpl basically uh, gpl is a free copyleft license for software and other kinds of works and uh, it is intended to guarantee your freedom to share and change all versions of a program to make sure it remains free software for all its user basically uh, there are some features of uh, general public license and these are you can copy the software second is distribute the software however you want third is change a fee charge a fee to uh, distribute the software and last point is makes whatever modifications to the software you want so these are the four basic or uh, important characteristics of general public license uh, these topics are already discussed in our previous lecture gpl and lgpl since they are related to the software license so i am trying to give a brief description of gpl and lgpl second is lesser general public license as a name suggests lesser general public license so it is um, basically similar to the gpl but uh, gives uh, you a lesser restrictions regarding to that GPL so this accompanies some open source software that it is how the software and its accompanying source code can be freely copied distributed and modified and the author of this license asks that you only use this license if you are licensing functionality already commonly available and uh, third point regarding to the LGPL is the LGPL is used to license free software so that it can be incorporated into both free software and proprietary software so GNU license basically a commonly there is a common term known as the license and public license and it offers lesser right to a work with the standard GPL license because it offers lesser right to a work than the standard GPL license so that's why it is called the lesser general public license so the difference between general public license and lesser general public license is that LGPL provides uh, offers lesser rights to a work than the standard GPL license so these are the important different uh, so um, some important point regarding to LGPL basically LGPL provides copyright protection you can say that yes it is a true statement and it can be used in commercial application yes it is also true work fixes extension must be released to the public domain here it is also true fourth point provide an explicit patent license this is false it is not um, um, provide your explicit patent license license and uh, next point is can be used to proprietary application yes it is true and it is a wider license yes it is also true so basically the basic point regarding to LGPL is that it uh, does not provide an explicit patent license next uh, now there are some important topic regarding to society law and ethics 
so let us take a quick revision society law and ethics uh, first point is intellectual property lie right intellectual property right uh, basically the property created by that by so first is what is intellectual property so intellectual property is basically property created by the application of human mind so intellectual property is a term basically referring to a number of distinct types of creations of the mind for which property right are rec uh, recognized in the corresponding field of laws and the articles concern regarding intellectual properties are textiles cosmetics pharmaceuticals machinery books etc and uh, intellectual property right types of intellectual property rights are patent copyright trademark design database and trade secret and uh, the important question regarding to intellectual property right is what is the difference between patent and copyright and uh, sometimes it also asked in examination that what is what do you mean by trademark so patent copyright and trademark are three important topics regarding to intellectual property right so let us take a quick revision of all these three topics first of all what is copyright as the name suggests copyright copyright basically allows authors musicians artistic artist etc to make money of of the labor it prevents other from taking their work for free it also prevents people from altering the work without permission so this is about copyright second is patent patent is an exclusive right granted by the authority to the applic applicant of an invention for a limited period of time so that is important point limited period of time always remember that patent is always for a limited period of time and um, third is trademark is an emphasis that trademark it is basically a distinctive sign which identifies the goods and service services of one company from those of another as uh, there is a symbol of coca cola here so it is basically a trademark and uh, this is a trademark for nike now um, after combining all these intellectual property right so the difference among all these in terms of who it serves so trademark serves for brands copyrights authors and for patent inventors so so patent serves for inventors copyright serves for authors and uh, trademarks are for brand and what is the purpose of trademark basically the purpose of the trademark is to distinguish product or service from competitors and for copyright it protects original creative create creative and or intellectual work and uh, patent purpose is to grant exclusive right to exploit an invention example of trademark are words logos slogans colors example of copyrights are music arts photography and examples of patent are medical devices technologies um, and time limit time limit for trademark is basically not defined it is unlimited or undef uh, undefinite and uh, copyright is about for 70 to 170 years and uh, patent is for 15 to 20 years generally it is 17 years next topic is plagiarism so what is plagiarism uh, plagiarism is basically stealing information of someone else is also known as plagiarism and it is a type of cyber crime and which is a very important topic regarding to society law and ethics so plagiarism is using another person ideas in your writing without giving credit to that person so as i told you earlier that stealing someone ideas is also called as plagiarism so in other words plagiarism is copying information and not giving the author credit for it so if you copying information of someone else and not giving credit for its author then it is a it is also called as plagiarism next is a uh, regarding to the plagiarism definition plagiarism is an act of stealing someone else creativity ideas or language and it is considered to be a cheating and a corrupt act in advanced countries with high standard of education plagiarism is considered to be an academic crime and uh, but it offers goes 
unnoticed in some countries including Cambodia so plagiarism is a basically a cyber crime and uh, it involves stealing someone information without uh, giving credit to its author and uh, in most of the countries basically advanced country, countries uh, it is considered to be an academic crime but uh, in some countries um, like Cambodia it is not considered as a cyber crime so it is illegal and uh, unethical next important topic is spoofing and phishing so these are the types of some cyber crime so basically spoofing is a part of phishing so what is phishing in which um, hacker tries to steal the sensitive information of the user and in spoofing hackers try to steal the identity to act as another individual and uh, always remember that spoofing is a part of phishing but if asked in examination what is the difference between spoofing and phishing then uh, you can specifically mention the difference between spoofing and phishing so in phishing hackers tries to steal the sensitive information of the user and in spoofing hackers tries to steal the identity to act as a another individual second point is uh, regarding to phishing is it is operated in a fraud manner and uh, in spoofing it does not require any fraud in phishing information is theft but in spoofing information is not theft identity is theft and uh, in phishing hackers tries to steal the sensitive information of the user and in spoofing hackers tries to steal the identity identity to act as another individual and in phishing it is operated in a fraud manner and spoofing it does not require any fraud next phishing cannot be a part of the spoofing and spoofing can be a part of the phishing no so that is the basic difference between spoofing and phishing spoofing can be a part of the phishing because in spoofing basically there is an identity theft and in phishing um, basically there is an info, uh, information theft so we can see that spoofing can be a part of phishing it is not essential that always spoofing is a part of phishing but it can be a part of the phishing but phishing cannot be a part of the spoofing because be those two terms are different to each other in phishing there is a theft of information and in spoofing there is a theft of identity so in identity theft uh, it may be possible that uh, some information can also be theft but uh, in phishing only the information is theft so identity is not concerned about phishing so phishing may be a part of uh, can be a part of can be part of uh, spoofing can be part of the phishing but phishing cannot be part of the spoofing second important point um, spoofing needs to download some malicious software in the victim computer such as trojan horse so spoofing is basically done in, um, done to get a new identity and uh, phishing no such malicious software is needed phishing is done to great to get uh, secret information so the most important point is that phishing is done to get the secret information and it's proving basically done to get new identity so that is the basic and most important difference between spoofing and phishing so if uh, if you have to write answer in only one line then you can say that phishing is done to get secret in uh, secret information and spoofing is basically done to get a new identity and second and the most important point regarding to spoofing is is that spoofing can be part of the phishing but phishing cannot be part of the spoofing now the last point regarding the phishing is spoofing uh, types of phishing phone phishing clone phishing and types of spoofing are ip spoofing email spoofing url spoofing these are the types of spoofing next uh, cyber crime this is a very common term cyber crime what is cyber crime i think all of you are very familiar to the term cyber crime and it is also a very important topic cyber crime and uh, it act 2000 and 2008 these topics are already discussed so here i give you a little um, description about cyber crime the u.s department of justice DOJ divides cybercrime into three categories. So cybercrime basically 
have three categories first prime in which the computing device is the target for example to gain a network access second crime in which the computer used as a weapon for example to launch a denial of service attack also called as dos attack and third crimes in which the computer used as an accessory to a crime for example using the computer to store illegally obtained data and uh, these are the types of cyber crimes uh, in which all uh, we already discussed some of them in this lecture phishing and spoofing and unauthorized access web hijacking pornography child sexual abuse SARS stalking software piracy salami attack service attack virus attack phishing so all these are the types of cyber crimes as far as syllabus is concerned phishing and spoofing are very important topic regarding to exam and uh, last uh, important topic is hacker and cracker these are basically two similar terms hacker and cracker so there is a little bit difference about hacker and cracker basically as far as the definition is concerned a hacker is a person who is interested in the working of any computer operating system most often hackers are programmers hackers obtain advanced knowledge of operating system and programming language and they may know various security holes within systems and the reasons for such holes and for cracker a cracker is a person who breaks into other people's systems with malicious intentions crackers gain unauthorized access destroy important data stop services provided by the server or basically cause problems for their targets crackers can easily be identified because they are um, because their actions are malicious so uh, we can say that uh, crackers have malicious uh, intention but uh, hackers uh, doesn't have malicious intention at all but uh, hackers have good knowledge of operating system and programming and uh, crackers basically use unauthorized access and destroy the important data because they have uh, malicious intentions second important point about hacker is that hacker constantly seek further knowledge share what they have discovered and they have never they have never have intentions about damaging or stealing data so that is a very important point um, hack, as i told earlier that hackers have no uh, malicious intentions so basically they um, hack the data for um, only the of their interest and for their knowledge and uh, for cracker they have intention about damaging or stealing stealing data hackers they uh, does not work against the law but cracker they work against law so basically we can say that crackers are criminal and the last point regarding to hacker is that they are always find weak points of the applications or website and they secure it and the crackers they have always bad intention whenever they work so the difference uh, between hacker and cracker is the basic difference or we can say that is the difference mentioned in one line that crackers are those persons who have malicious intentions and hackers uh, doesn't have basically malicious intention they hack the data for their knowledge or seek for the knowledge or uh, um, share what they have discovered so this is uh, the difference between hacker and cracker and uh, this is the last topic regarding to societal learn ethics so uh, let us take a quick revision what we have read in this learn in this lecture basically license so three types of license are there bsd license BSD license also known as um, Berkeley software distribution BSD license so BSD represent a family of permissive free software license so note down that permissive free software license and they have few restrictions in comparison to general public license so that is the first important point and second important point are is that um, there is there are two different or uh, two important version of BSD license 
first is modified BST or second is TFBST license. Uh, modified is also called as three clause license and it allows unlimited redistribution of any purpose and second is the license also contain a clause restricting the use of the names of the contributors for endorsement of a dry drug without specific permission and the simplified BSD license it omits the non endorsement clause so the difference between uh, these two is uh, basically simplified BSD license omits the non endorsement clause and in um, new BSD or modified BSD license basically allows or unlimited rest, uh, redistribution of, of software second is MIT license so MIT license basically is a least restrictive open source license and uh, in using MIT license you can use copy and modify the software however you want you can give the software uh, for sale it and uh, the only restriction is that it is accompanied by the license agreement as I told you that uh, there is uh, some spelling mistake in MIT license in point number two so point number two you can give the software away give the software away for free or sell it third is Apache license the Apache license grants a number of rights to users and uh, these rights can be applied to both copyright and patent and rights uh, regarding to Apache license are basically there are five rights and uh, in, um, as you see that is in the only four are mentioned first uh, right are rights are perpetual means once granted you can continue to use them forever second it's right are worldwide so it is not written rights are worldwide you can note it note down worldwide rights are worldwide and what is the meaning of this term rights are worldwide means it is a right if the rights are granted in one country then they are granted in all other countries and uh, second point is rights are granted for no fees or royalty rights are non-exclusive it means you cannot the sole license other can also use the license work and fourth is rights are irrevocable means no one can you take right away once they are granted general public license and lesser general public license are already discussed in our previous lectures so the basic difference is between general public license and uh, lesser general public license is that lesser general pub, uh, public license basically offers less rights to a work than a standard GPL license and a standard GPL license or general public license basically provides uh, four types of functionality you can copy the software distribute the software however you want charge a fees to uh, distribute uh, distribute the software and fourth is make whatever modifications to the software you want next is intellectual property right so there are three important intellectual property right patent copyright and trademark you have to learn this chart because it contain all the definitions its purpose examples and time limit and uh, plagiarism plagiarism is basically is stealing information of someone else without giving credit to author and uh, is proofing and phishing phishing basically is steal hackers tries to steal the sensitive information but in his proofing hackers um, basically tries to steal the identity is proofing can be a part of phishing but phishing cannot be a part of his proofing and uh, third important point regarding to spoofing is that uh, spoofing needs to download some malicious software in victim computer but in phishing no such malicious software is needed next is cyber crime cyber crime basically the definition of cyber crime given by US Department of, the Department of Justice and uh, contain three important point first cyber crimes 
are the times in which the computing device is the target for example to gain network access second times in which the computer is used as a weapon for example launch of denial of service attack and third is crimes in which the computer is used as an accessory to a crime so these are some types of cyber crime phishing cyber stalking salami attack pornography web hijacking unauthorized access virus attacks service attacks child sex abuse these are all types of these are the types of cyber crimes and hacker and tracker hacker and trackers basically the difference between hacker and tracker is that tracker is a person who breaks into the other people's system with malicious intentions but hackers have no malicious intention so only the difference between hacker and trackers if we want to say in one line that intention trackers have malicious intentions or but hackers don't have um, any malicious intention they basically hack data for their knowledge and uh, they are not basically try to damage or stealing data or trying to damage or stealing data so these are the difference between hackers and crackers thank you for watching this video